is it time to throw away your Mavic 2 Pro? Now today I want to talk to you about the differences of the Mavic 2 Pro and the new DJI Mini 3 Pro and whether the Mini 3 Pro is a replacement for the Mavic 2 Pro. First up is image quality and arguably this is the most important reason to decide whether you should upgrade or not. After all, if the image quality isn't at least as good as the Mavic 2 Pro, then there's no point going for a Mini 3 Pro. Now when the Mini 3 Pro first came out, I was umming and ahhing whether the quality was better or worse. It was definitely sharper, but I think that was a lot of over sharpening that was going on. But whether the actual image was nicer, it was really hard to say. It was certainly a good image and really impressive considering how tiny the drone is. But I wasn't quite sure if it was a professional image that I would want to use with my clients. However, I've got to say, since they did the firmware update where they added uh, the adjustment for noise reduction and sharpness, this has transformed the Mini 3 Pro's image. Suddenly now it doesn't look digital and over sharpened like it did before. You can get a really nice looking image, much like what the Mavic 2 could produce. Second up is how good is it in low light? And that is something the Mini 3 Pro is much better than the Mavic 2 Pro. The image you can get in low light thanks to the f1.7 lens is really impressive. It's much improved over what you get out of the Mavic 2 Pro. Now high ISO performance might not be that much better, maybe it's slightly better, but it's pretty much the same to be honest. But it's really that wider aperture that is making the big difference here and why the Mini 3 Pro is much better in low light situations. I think if you're going to shoot a lot in sort of dark situations at dusk for example, then the Mini 3 Pro is an obvious choice over the Mavic 2 Pro. It's obvious and it's in the name, but the Mini 3 Pro is obviously smaller than the Mavic 2. When you're traveling and you're going long distances and you've got to pack a lot of kit into a small bag, every bit of space really does matter. And it's really nice how tiny the Mini 3 Pro is and how small of a space you can pack it into your camera bag. Suddenly you're only taking up one lens slot in your bag for your drone, whereas before with the Mavic 2 it's a bit like a 7200 lens. It takes up a good section of your bag. As you always hear me talking about on this channel, I love USB-C charging and that's how you charge your Mini 3 Pro. With the Fly More Pack you get the uh, charger which you can charge three batteries at the same time all via USB-C and this is just so useful. It means you can charge it anywhere, you can charge it in the car, you can easily charge it off a V-Lock battery for example. It just means you've always got an option to charge up your drone battery. Finally, and this might be the most important thing for a lot of people when deciding which drone to go for, and that is the fact that the Mini 3 Pro is under 250 grams. The really important uh, weight which decides which category the drones end up in and potentially whether you're actually allowed to fly your drone at all or not. Linked to the weight and size is also the noise of the Mini 3 Pro. It's extremely quiet compared to the Mavic 2 Pro. It's amazing how much of a difference that can make and that might be another factor that you might be considering when you want to actually fly your drone. You know, as soon as you take off the Mini 3 Pro, you don't really hear it. It doesn't disturb anyone else around you. Whereas certainly with the Mavic 2 Pro, it's something that everyone notices when you're flying. So there you go. There are the reasons why you should upgrade to a Mini 3 Pro. However, there are some reasons why you maybe you should be sticking to your Mavic 2 Pro instead. First up, there is the sensors. And while the Mavic 2 Pro is absolutely covered in sensors in all directions, unlike the Mini 3 Pro, which only has front facing and rear sensors, it doesn't have side ones. And I did almost crash my Mini 3 Pro when doing some tests for this video, and kind of proves the point of why having those side sensors is so important. Second up is stability, and well, a large drone is just going to be better when flying in windy conditions. Now don't get me wrong, the Mini 3 Pro is very impressive. I took it to some Greek islands for a professional shoot earlier in the year, and it managed to handle some incredibly strong winds, which I was really impressed about. I thought the thing was going to fly away as soon as I took off. It was struggling, but it definitely did handle it pretty well. But with the Mavic 2, you just have more confidence in knowing the wind conditions that you can fly in. Third up, and this is probably the biggest reason for me why I don't necessarily want to fully switch over to a Mini 3 Pro, and that is the aperture. The Mini 3 Pro lacks having an aperture, it is just fixed at 1.7, and that means you've got to use the shutter or ND to get your exposure to the correct level. And this is just a bit of a pain, especially when it's small adjustments because the clouds are going in and out. When I switched to the Mavic 2 again, I realized how much 
easier it is when you have aperture control. You can just quickly adjust the f-stop up and down a little bit so that you can get the perfect exposure without affecting your shutter speed. D-Log on the Mavic 2 isn't really that flat, but compared to D-Cine-like on the Mini 3 Pro, it definitely gives you a lot more room to adjust the image. My biggest issue probably with the Mini 3 Pro outside of the aperture control is the fact that you don't have a huge uh, dynamic range to work with in the file. I definitely think the drone could probably give you a really nice looking D-Log file, which hopefully maybe one day DJI will add to the Mini 3 Pro. But unfortunately for now, we are limited to the dynamic range that D-Cine Lite can give us. With D-Log on the Mavic 2 Pro, you do have a lot more flexibility in terms of adjusting the image. A feature that no one seems to really talk about on the Mavic 2 Pro is the fact that you have both HQ mode and normal mode when recording. What this is, is when you shoot HQ mode, you actually get a one-to-one -one readout of the sensor. So it actually crops in to get the best quality. Now, obviously what that means is you end up actually zooming in on the image. And this is really great. This is really handy. Effectively, it gives you an extra um, focal length when flying your drone just by switching between normal mode and HQ mode. This is really useful when you want a stronger parallax effect or if you just want a slightly tighter shot on the subject that you're shooting. Finally, and this is a little bit of a vague sort of term, but it's the feel when actually flying. It's really hard to describe. If you haven't flown a drone in the past, you won't really know where I'm coming at with this. But even though you're not actually connected to the drone itself, there's definitely a different feeling when flying different drones of different sizes. When it comes to the Mavic 2, it has a really nice confident feel when you're actually flying in the air. Definitely the Mini 3 doesn't have that. It's a lot more jittery in the air when you're taking off. It feels like, you know, you just not slightly knock the controller and it's going to fly a lot further than what the Mavic 2 Pro will do, where it feels much more planted in the sky. It's something you can't really show. It's just something you feel when you're actually flying between the different drones. And certainly the Mavic 2 Pro is still a more enjoyable drone to fly over the Mini 3 Pro. So with all that in mind, would you upgrade your Mavic 2 Pro to a Mini 3 Pro? For me, I'm still undecided. Despite having both drones this last six months or so, I still find that I want to use both for different reasons. Unfortunately, when I'm going on shoots and I have to fill out a carne, I kind of have to pick one or the other. I have limited space and then I've got to make a commitment to which one I'm going to take. Often that's just based on where I'm going, the types of areas that I need to shoot in, and what kind of shots I'm hoping to get. There are certain advantages with the Mavic 2 Pro that the Mini 3 Pro doesn't have. If the sub 250 grams is important to you, then it's an obvious choice. The Mini 3 Pro is the one to get. I guess the good news from all of this is you're not sacrificing any real image quality going for the Mini 3 Pro over the Mavic 2 Pro instead. So don't worry if you need to go for the smaller drone, you're not gonna suddenly downgrade in the image that you're getting from your aerial shots. If I could only have one drone, oh, it would be a really tough one to decide, but I'd probably go with the Mini 3 Pro. It's just more useful. There's more places you can fly it over the Mavic 2 Pro and with the extra new features, the better low light, they're all good reasons why it just makes more sense as a drone to fly. There are still some software updates that potentially DJI could provide to the Mini 3 Pro. It's probably unlikely now, but we can all hope things like D-Log would make a huge difference and I think would take the Mini 3 Pro to the next level. If weight isn't a concern and you've already got your Mavic 2 Pro and you're thinking, is it worth the upgrade? Well, maybe not. Maybe for you, if you really don't need that extra lightweight and the other features that the Mini 3 Pro provides, then stick to your Mavic 2. It still produces an excellent image that rivals even the Mavic 3. One of the things I really love about flying the Mavic 2 Pro, because it's now so much older and I've used it so much, I feel less concerned about breaking it, about crashing it into a tree than I do when flying a newer drone. You know, it's a case of it's had such good use that if it were to die on this next trip, it wouldn't be the end of the world. So perhaps you get shots that you just wouldn't normally get with a drone where you feel a bit more precious about. So I'd love to know what your opinion is. Are you going to be upgrading to the Mini 3 Pro or are you going to be sticking to your Mavic 2 Pro instead? Now, if you've got a Mini 3 Pro and you're wondering how to get the best image quality out of it, then definitely check out my video where I talk about the best settings for sharpness and noise reduction. And also, how do I color grade that footage as well. 